Domega Logai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling. This very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. The only Lord of a God who has triumphed. Triumphs and made show in his humanity in the true doctrine of Kenosis. How we following him because having the sperm of Christ in us can also triumph like Christ, the way how we triumphed over Satan, crushed the head, and calling us now, as we walk breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to trample Satan under our feet, as the word goes to say in Proverbs 10:25, the righteous will have an everlasting foundation but the wicked will perish like a whirlwind. Every believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been sanctified and kept apart to be the righteous one. And every believer in Christ has an everlasting foundation and therefore he has been set before the foundation of the world. We have been made to be holy and blameless. Before the foundation of the world, the glory which is due unto the Lord our God. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 and 7. We need to pay to the Lord our God for which cause before the foundation of the world, the work which he has designed for us and kept. We need to walk in them. To such extension, dear brethren, to such great Lord of our God be the glory to the highest. While on the earth, no matter however great they would come in the terms of Stoics, Gnosticism, or the doctrine of Nicola Pines, thinking that the world has gods which could be powerful for them. The Baal of the Old Testament, the present Kali in my country, India. They go on to have their realm of triumphing over the men who have been made blind by not to believe the truth, neither though their name is been written in the book of life, not recognizing the true worth of our Lord of our God by the holy manner walk of life that we should walk. And because of our failure to nagad them, to reveal them the right word of the Lord of God, Satan blinds their thinking. To such an extension they think the man-made gods, the daimonian idotes, are really having a lot of influence upon them because they have been providing for them their life and their security. And yet they believe that it is in their hands that the heaven and the earth belong. 
the hands of these fallen angels. But they know not that it is the only our Lord, our God, who is the one who made for us the heaven and the earth being renovated in the literal six days of restoration. And we have been placed over here on this earth and in and Ezekiel 31 and 32 chapters which describe in chapter number 31 the beauty above the Garden of Eden and chapter number 32 about the rays and the things pertaining to the terrestrial information wherewith though many people are interested to look back and seek the galaxies the light luminaries in whichever form they want. In these two chapters we understand comparing it to Egypt, comparing it to Pharaoh. Our Lord of God describes that though for us the Garden of Eden is the great one but yet greater than that he has made the world but the world because of its sin lost it, the rebellion by Satan. Keeping that in mind, now Satan comes back to teach that it is superior, but it leads these people not to know, not to understand the truth in Christ. Therefore they worship the stars, they worship the dead, the necromancy. They consult the enchanters, they go for wizards, and they consider they are guards for them, but they forgot the superior creation being mentioned in Ezekiel 31 and 32 is nothing before the one who created it, the Lord of God. The men on these 40 years of wilderness, the food what they tasted of the angels is nothing before the food what he has reserved and kept for us when we look in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. He has something far greater for us because he is the creator and he demanded through the Israelites to destroy the things which are practiced on this earth which is an abomination to him because by becoming a disciple to the world they practice such and such things. And therefore he says you have to be tummy in before the Lord of a God by becoming to walk blameless, flawless. And therefore he says in the church age, walk in the spirit so, sh so that you shall not fulfill the lust of it. And we have now in the doctrine, march in the spirit to learn the epinosis apocalypti. Because the Lord of a God is the creator, the things that he has revealed and kept for us is enough, but yet the people, the way how they wept, called as Bokim, by not throwing out this idolatry worships or any other thing which is contrary to the Lord's mind or which has been contrary to the Lord our God's thinking, no matter what our dear he may be, what our kit or kidney may be. Because in the book of Exodus chapter 33 we read, Though they were of his own family, they were been slaved off, and that day there were more than 3,000 people who were been slaved, and they stood stand by the Lord of a God, and those were the Levites. By that we mean and learn that though it is in your own blood, though it is in your own family, it is the will of Lord God the Father to cut them off, those who don't serve the Lord of a God in true spirit and in biblical truth. Therefore, the people who fail in their duty, in their responsibility of becoming Paiman Didasco or teaching shepherds, those who would lay down their life. We can begin that with Jacob, the way how we work day and night in taking care of the shepherd. 
We can learn that from an example by David, the man who slipped the bear and slipped the lion to rescue those shepherd or sheep from the mouth of those wolves. We can learn the great lesson from Moses. The way how the sin began, yet he goes to plead to the Lord of a God, so that, Lord, if ever you want to see that they should be destroyed, but first remove my name. The man who pleaded, that's the right work of the shepherd. And if now in the present Christendom, the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, if the people don't love about it, or don't think about it, or don't consider about it, to fulfill the catarisman process in comparison to 2 Corinthians 13.10 or 39 and 10. This is what we really desire or wish or pray. What is that division pray? Your perfection. The catarisis process. That's why this bona fide gift has been given for us in the church age. Because the greater you fail to expound them the truth, the greater these men are coming. To enjoy the truth in a mask of lies. Therefore they consider all gods are one. But they do not know the heaven and the earth belong to the Lord of a God. And when it belongs to us rightly, yet our Lord of a God comes to show forth in the church age through his love that none should perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of bible doctrine but yet we find in the book of revolution chapter 17 teaching to us chapter 13 verse number 8 teaching to us though much has been given for us and much has been expected from us yet we can find in the realm of this people the way that they come is not at all in accord with the word. Therefore, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. These are the crowd when Eliezer, the son of Phinehas, put a javelin spear to stop the plague. But here we find the men who are worshipping the beast or the dragon or the idolatry image is what we can call today including the Roman Catholicism whose names have been not written. What a great pain it would be for us. But at in the millennium, we begin by the believer, but at the end of the millennium, we find the Gog and Magog revolution because they don't want to have a right path with the Lord of a God, daily following my Lord and coming to, my cro coming to carry his cross and become his disciples. That's why they don't find the happiness of a Macarian believer in Christ. Though they are being called to be the Macarian Kyneketesus of the church age, because they don't want to have the satisfaction with the Lord of a God. In the millennium, yet they will love to become religion and they love to rebel against my Lord and they love to become into Gog and Magog rebellion. And those names which are not been written in the book of life of the Lamb was been slain for us. The words Fazo was being put to death so that we can enjoy the resurrection of my Lord and know very well the last enemy, even the death. Because the world, the sin, and the flesh, when we crucify to that, we are no longer into the world because we don't find our satisfaction in the favorable circumstances of the world. But a true believer has been satisfied only in my Christ. We have everything in Christ. We have nothing to lose in Him. And we can do all things through Christ because it is He who has begun the good work in us. And it is He who is going to see the completion of it, the perfection of it. So 
says Philippians 1 6. It is you who has triumphed over Satan, distributing the gifts, the spoils. That's what the psychological background term, triambas, which Apostle Paul uses for us to teach. Yes, we have been over here now, triumphing in Christ, triumphing in Christ. Therefore, he says, though in the book of life the names of those unbelievers which has not been found from the foundation of the world which has been slain like a like a lamb the duty of us is to pray and to get them to christ the barking crowd the crowd which they believe yet they have the heavens and the earth in their control they cannot even control their own soul not to believe the lies how could they control how could they control the things pertaining to nature? <laughs> they may rightly develop their mind to control the people, control their own sensations, but they haven't developed the mind to do the great and supernatural things which my Christ of the Lord of God alone can do. And he has given that authority for us. That's what he says, the mighty God, the 410 we are in our duty of our office being called. For a believer, you know not what a power he has given to you, the indwelling trinity. For a believer, he has made superior then to the chief fallen angel, which is Satan. And for a believer, he has given power to trample Satan under your feet and make your every show of glory by honoring the Lord's word above his name because of or on account of the righteousness of him that has been credited to you. Therefore, the righteous will make an everlasting foundation. But the wicked, like an whirlwind, they will perish. We aren't wicked any longer after believing in Christ, but our deeds are wicked. Our thoughts are wicked. Our imaginations are deceiving the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, rather than being controlled in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We grieve, we squalls, we deceive. We are not truly growing up, breath by breath, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Looking upon the time, we are to be the communicators of the word of the Lord our God, but yet you require someone to come and teach to you the fundamentals. Therefore, dear brethren, wake up. Micah chapter 2 gives a great description for us to learn. Beginning with verse number 6. Prophecy you not. That's what they say. That prophecy you not say they to them that prophecy they shall not prophecy to them because that they shall not take shame why we are telling you these things because at the bhima throne at the judgment seat of christ you should be not ashamed because much is given for us and much is expected from us and looking at the time, we should be the communicators of Lord's glory, but yet you are ashamed. Because you are not doing the work of your pilgrimage trip perfectly, but rather believing lies and considering all gods are one. And thinking what to do on this earth, do good and live. No, not at all. You have been called for virtue. Good is nothing before virtue, because that virtue has been accompanied by Alethea and Dikaya Sune, because you can show forth your Agathe Sune, Alethea meaning the truth, Dikaya Sune meaning the righteousness, and Agathe Sune meaning the good of intrinsic value. And no believer on this earth, if ever he has been, if ever if he has not been occupied with my Christ, will ever produce the character of my Christ of Agathe Sune. No believer. Because the reason why you have been kept in this church age through Christ and been encapsulated in the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is purely because you are no longer of this earth, neither you are here to walk in the terms of this earth. But you are here to talk something great, which should be an apocalyptic revolution to this world. Come back and dig and look what you have in the Bible, in the original language of the scriptures of every Greek and Aramaic, and teach them. Change their way of thinking, being blinded by Satan. 
But first, you should be free from the clutches of your own lustful patterns, of your own sin nature. Therefore, Colossians 3 again comes to our mind to teach. Necromate, put to death. Put to death the deeds of your flesh, and once if they have been put to death, it cannot come to life. You know it very well. Therefore, in the reasons we find, burn it off. Because again you, shall no go, no, again, you shall not go back and construct it. Therefore, burn it off. Isn't it a great privilege for us to burn it off? So that we shall not go back again. But rather, we should be available to the glory of the Lord our God, breath by breath. Therefore, the word necromate, before to that he says in Colossians 3, 1, if you have been risen with Christ, the conditional clause, and it has to be a first-class condition because we are indeed risen in Christ for truth. But the problem is, have you been truly crucified your flesh? The culprit, to use the word. thoroughly and perfectly in my Lord. If ever you would slice anywhere of your flesh, you would cross check and say, yes, you have been in the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit. By that we mean not speaking in tongues as the tongues crowd go. We are, by, by, by that we mean that you have been there with doctrine, renovating the standards of your thinking to fulfill John 8, 31 and 32. If you continue in my word and if you abide in my word, what a privilege it will be for us. Then only you will be my disciples. Therefore, he says in Jeremiah 33 3, call unto me and I will show you great things which you haven't known. But the problem is we don't call to the Lord our God for our things, but we call for Him for petty things, the silly things of this life, which have no meaning, which have no definition, which have no purpose at all. The minimum requirements of the details of life are needed, but that doesn't mean that that is the only life for you. You have something greater life in this church age, the life which the past dispensational believers themselves couldn't enjoy what we are enjoying. In fact, indeed, the least who has been born in this kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. But concerning John the Baptist, our Lord our God says that in comparison to all the prophets, none is greater than one who has been born of a woman like John the Baptist in the Old Testament. But now in the church age, every believer is far greater than John the Baptist because though he is least, he has been given the indwelling trinity. He has been given every mannerism of player of Baltimore privileges. He has been given to be the Makarian Kainiketesus believer. Satisfied only in Christ. He doesn't have to satisfy by looking upon the details of this earth or any favorable circumstances. He's satisfied in Christ because he's been indwelled by the Trinity. He's satisfied in Christ because he's been cleansed, thoroughly purging out day by day, breath by breath, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through his word, by the washing of his water through the regeneration of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and by the washing of the water through his word, being taught accurately. So he's not worried what the details of this life will lead him. Because in every step it is the Lord of a God who is going to ordain or make him to go into the good steps through his word. It is every step because of him, not by anything else. But at what are we finding today in our pulpits? They say to the prophets, don't teach us so that we shall not come to know and bear about our shame. They're saying today to the pastor, teach us as well, 2 Timothy 4.2. Returned long back in the first century of 68, DD, 68 AD in the pastoral epistles. But now we are another 40 years ahead than we can call 2060 AD or 50 years ahead. 2068 AD, almost all 2000 years back. But in the present 2,000 years, even afterward, the people have become more worse, not to listen to sound Bible doctrine. The same things what we read in the book of Micah long back, 
They don't want to learn the right wisdom. They don't want to teach the right wisdom. Neither they are here to hear right word. Whatever they require is only for a temporary solution. Not able to make up every day to learn Bible doctrine. Therefore, dear brethren, we shall have a word of prayer and come back and look and learn what our Lord our God has intended and kept for us in the spiritual manna of the church age. We shall have a word of prayer. Infinitely Holy Father, as we are going to share these things, we pray that let God the Holy Spirit challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. Amen. In Mika time itself, when they are saying that the pastor teacher in the present time, referring to the principle and application of that verse to our lives at the present scenario, they said that time did not teach us our shame. Today in the present Christendom, though it has been much polluted, and it shall destroy with the sore destruction, not just destroy, but with the sore destruction. Yet the churches are not arising and departing from which they think they are well settled to be called as by thrust. They have come to run into programs, they have come to run in every mannerism of their teaching. And what is it they are running in their programs? They are happy to rise in the midst of you, every mannerism of every cult. They are coming and teaching to you weekly months programs. They are coming and teaching to you the things pertaining to monthly months tides. <laughs> it has already been polluted and if you don't arise and depart, because now it is not a time for you to rest. The time for you is to now to diligently seek and search the right will of the Lord of a God, the right mind of Christ, and become disciples of the word of the Lord of a God under the teaching shepherd, the right designation for a pastor teacher. Teaching shepherd who is here to lay down his life, who is laid down for his soul. That's what it says, suke in the Greek, not zoe, but suke who is laying down his soul for the flock of the church, came to serve and not to be served. Do you know what a privilege we have? The privilege which we are going through day breath by breath, the privilege which we are enjoying in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to become like Christ. And if your mind has been still occupied with the details of your life concerning to the Old Testament, because in the Old Testament it was endowment, in the New Testament it is enabling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament it was yet quite contrary of practices towards the law, but in the New Testament greater law than the Old Testament to be always filled with the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit to march in the Spirit. This is what the New Testament teaches for us. The Old Testament which we cannot bear, says Colossians 2.14, taken on to the cross and been nailed out, blotted out. But in the New Testament we have something great. And the things pertaining to the New Testament, it says, you are now the children of Christ being sealed with an armor's deposit of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in you. Therefore, dear brethren, arise and depart from your rest, thinking your minds with the stumbling blocks being set. No pastor teacher would love to insult you, would love to hurt you. Like the way how he would care his own baby, because he is a pediatrician doctor, after the birth of an evangelical work, gynecology. Like a parent, he takes care of you. 
But looking upon the time, since it is a high time of the calling of us in Christ, we have to be available to the work of the Lord our God, rather than making excuses, rather than giving reasons, rather than rising up your own alibis, becoming the great soldiers of my Christ. Do you know that's the great privilege we have, to become the great soldiers of my Christ. And we are inexcusable if we don't become the soldiers of my Christ. The primary reason being that why we aren't becoming the soldiers of my Christ is purely the pastor teacher doesn't know what is the proper revolution given for us in the church age, though we have been given in John 16, 25 to teach us that we are here to communicate for you in the mystery realm of the teachings rather than teaching to you some parables or proverbs. Because we have been sanctified and kept apart now in the church age to become like men the Macarian kinecatesis. Once again renewing for us in the present scenario the word Macarian, the word derived from Macarias. And the strong code number for 83107. It teaches to us, dear brethren, that the one who is in this world yet independent of the world. How we can teach that? To illustrate that in the present Christendom or the things happening in the present technology, you can calculate that to your cell phone or your smartphone, whatever you use. Do you know how the people are addicted to the cell phone? Though you are in the world, your phone is needed. We don't say that cell phone is not needed. But what is the work of it? That's it. We have to abide in it. We should be very sharp. Like the serpent. At the same time, we should be very free, harmless, like the dove. Why these things have been said for us? Because in this world, always what do you find? Wherever you go, whatever you find, you find all the time biting, devouring, and consuming one another. That is this world. But Lord God did not intend or intended this world to be in such terms. Therefore he says once again to Noah, every mannerism of the flesh you have authority over it. And that's what he says in Genesis 9.1. But when we come to the church age in Ephesians 6, he says, through chapter 3, we are here to become the professors, those who are believers. If that's the case for the believers to become the professors for the angels, then how much more should be for the pastor teacher? Therefore, he is the dean and church is the universe, university where the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the authorities will come to learn Bible doctrine being taught by you being a frail man and you being in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit till the time you could depart from this earth it is the divine treasure of the Lord of a God kept in this earth and vessel and that's the privilege not for just few men but it is a privilege for every believer because they have been given equal privilege and equal opportunity but the callings of them is of a greater responsibility for some pastor teachers for some shepherds shepherding teachers that's what both go one for some evangelists and for every believer in the permanence of the spiritual gifts at least one minimum spiritual gift given to him by that i mean the gift of helps the gift of hospitality the gift of administration not gibberishly jumping along and dancing along or talking along in tongues neither heeding for miracles or healings because it is the sovereign grace of the lord our god to bestow his miracle or healing upon that person to whomsoever he wills but not through this channel. The channels running out for oil business, kerchief business, and in fact indeed for worst mannerisms of business has led them, even the unbelievers, to consider that these Christians are also like cults. The failing cults of the past dispensation, practicing and doing. When you go back and look, which is not in proper order, which of a lot of a God designed them to keep in proper order. The church should run in proper order using five words of edification rather than 10,000 words of meaningless. 
the five words of understanding is what the Rima declaration of the Lord of a God is all about. And that's what he has intended the church and has given every believer minimum at least one gift, one gift, one gift. The seriousness of your calling in the church age, if ever you would wake up for it, if ever you would realize what it is, if ever you would think how great it is, do you know what a privilege it would be for us? If we truly wake up, if we truly understand, if we would truly think, if we would truly meditate, we wouldn't have found many people becoming like the way the word of the Lord of God could call them as Nareems. Though they have come to the age of 40 or under the age of 40, they haven't learned the responsibility towards the Lord of a God. That's why when Elisha was going through, they were commenting on him, Bald man. <laughs> Not for the commenting of bald man, he called the beers to slay them out, but he called for a reason that they haven't learned the responsibility in their life. Yet to know what is the fear towards the right prophet of the Lord of a God. If the prophet would come and we read in First Samuel when he went to the house of Jesse or to that place, the people trembled because they knew. And they asked, Lord, have you come in peace or it is a wrath of the Lord? And when they said, when he said it was for peace, then they relaxed themselves. That's the real work of the teaching shepherd. Because he is the representative of the Lord's will. But in today's Christendom, many of the people who do not know the right value of the pastor teacher to have this bona fide gift and then and come and come then come and communicate, they are entrusted to say they are pastors at the cost of not having the bona fide gift of the pastor work. If they would if they would had really the work of the pastor in their life, then they would show forth by making you every day disciples. That is the real burden of the pastor for which cause he has been kept alive. And if he doesn't do that, then you know very well he's not been sent by the Lord of a God, says Second Corinthians chapter 11. If he's not worried about the merit my care for the church, he's not been sent by the Lord. And since many men who have entered into the ministry to think that they have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher and they're able to make up great things is really ruining the church age. And thus these shepherds when they come they will not explain the things needed for you. The responsibility of every believer in Christ the teachings towards every believer in the Lord and his burden towards the Lord of a God. Therefore, what do we find in explaining one simple concept? If the Bible would be the cell phone or the smartphone how you would use rather than getting yourselves much closer into the details of this life, if you don't arise and depart because now it is not the time of rest because already the world has been polluted even the word says for us it has been polluted with a great damnation that's what he says it has been polluted with a sore damnation or destruction so if the bible would be our cell phone and rather than cell phone if the people of the present Christendom would realize if what would our life be if we were treat our Bibles as they keep it all the time the cell phone do you know how it is if the recharge is over they want to go and recharge it if the battery is down they carry with them something of another mode called as I'm not able to get that in my mouth as some power bank a power source because they don't want to miss the continuity in their life <laughs> what a morons this would be they have already in them the power of Ladgar the Holy Spirit they have to be with him always in the fellowship of Ladgar the Holy Spirit so that they could arise and depart because already the land has been polluted, even with a sore destruction. 
Therefore now it is not the time for you to rest. It is the time for the pastor teachers to not to go with the sugar-coated preaching, but rather whether they may be hearing or forbearing, whether they may follow him or like him or not, preach the truth as it is. Teach the truth as it is in love towards God the Father, because the wounds of a faithful friend will heal. You are diseases the diseases of your sins, the diseases of your thinking, the diseases of your walking mind, which are constantly like thorns and thistles around you. But what you do very well, you want to have your power banks, because continual power has been needed for your smartphones to recharge. If not, you know very well, the smartphones don't have that battery backup to wait for a long time. Therefore, some people are there even they would carry the charging point pins so that whenever they could find time, they want to keep it for charging. If that would be Bible, if that would be the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, rather than that charger, whatever you talk, or the smartphone, whatever you take, if that would be the Bible, if it want to be in continuous charge for you, you know how beautiful your life would be. We shall read some of the conditions over here, written by M. A. Lathbury, in the book of Lord is Near of April 1 edition, 2014. He says, what would our life be like if we were to treat our Bibles as it were our cell phones? And he says, what if we would always carry our Bible with us in our purse or in our pants pocket, like the cell phone what you carry? And he says further, what if we would have left our Bible lying somewhere and would immediately turn back to look for it? And you know the people are also so smart. <laughs> Earlier, this IMEA number could be registered through your number of a unique one. If they would find this costly smartphones, I think in America and all the Apple phones which are greater and better. In my country, India, depending upon the domestic ranges, they buy with various brands. No matter what have a smartphone it might be, if they would lose or if they would keep that somewhere and they forget and if they would again call back to that number, they would found it switch off. Because the smartphone has been taken by someone means it has been robbed by someone. And though this man comes and searches for it, though this man goes and gives a complaint depending upon the IMEI phone bill, what he has purchased, no recovery of it. And you know what all he does to get that back? He says, I have kept a lock in it. He cannot break it. And if ever, if they put any new SIM card in it, that will go an information to the number of which he was been using earlier because already he will be taken one more number. And even at that time, you want to go and call that number where it was been used, search it through GPRS. Complain in a cyber crime. <laughs> and ultimately, you want to see that he's going to get back that phone because he says he has spent a lot of money in it. And the people are so interested today even to buy the high advanced versions of smartphones. And they would say now, even though it has been thefted, they want to have some insurance on it and they can make it to see if there's someone has been using it wrongly, they can get him back. Do you know how? great this mind of man has become. If that care would have been towards my Bible, if that care would have been towards every day coming to Bible class, to search diligently and to seek and to know and to learn, what a great difference it would be, isn't it? Your lives would have been meaningful. Your lives would have been always oriented to the plan of the Lord of a God. 
your lives would have been fulfilled as a 40 to 21 on account of the righteousness of the Lord our God given to us he demands that his law has to be magnified that is his word If we would diligently seek Him, search Him, if we would call unto the Lord our God, if we would have to look the right hand to fellowship with my Christ, kneel down then and there, wherever you are, in the presence of the Lord our God, and use it for Him, then do you think Lord's hand is short in providing for you those shepherds who shall reign over you in wisdom and in knowledge? But you don't do that because you are accustomed because you are acquainted with your cell phone more than your own self. You have become chained to cell phones. That's what they put the shackles. If at the time of Jeremiah, he bought the shackles of wood upon his neck and said, this is the burden what you're going to have. And the false prophet says, no, the Lord has set you free and he cuts off the shackles of wood. Then Jeremiah comes with the word of the Lord of God and says to him, The same year you shall die because you are not the true prophet. And he says, The shackles of wood has been replaced by the shackles of iron. That means the burden what you had now for wood, if that would have been broken, it would be broken. But rather great than that, it has been made with iron. Iron cannot be broken so easily. The figurative language to teach to us that your burden will be increased. And the things what we learn today, that you have put your smartphones to become a chain for you. Imagine that smartphone should be nothing before the Bible. And if you put Bible, and if the Bible can chain you, the word says in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, the instructions which has been given by the father and by the mother, put it upon your neck like a great ornament of decoration. What a privilege it will be. The statute is what I have thought. Let it be adorning your neck. And the way how he writes in Deuteronomy chapter 6 to make. When your kid rises up, sits or stands. Train him up in the word of the Lord of God. Teach him up in the Bible doctrine. If ever he is forgetting, write down upon your doorpost. Make phylacteries and tie it up. So that he shall not depart from this word, he shall not depart from this thinking, and he should be always available to the glory of the Lord. Rather than that smartphone, if you would tie up the Bible upon your neck. And that's what we write again, as we are told, though we are in the 501 year of the Reformation movement, when the 95 Theses of Martin Luther were being nailed onto the doorposts, Now, the entire Bible should be nailed to the forehead of the pastor teacher who is standing there and for every believer to learn with responsibility. We have great in the Bible to reason a lot many things. There are so many things in the Bible which will make our entire life to think so soon we have come to the age of our death, to think so soon if the Lord our God delays the rapture, he would say, so soon we have come close to our death. And yet, oh Lord, we have so many things to learn. Because there are so many things in the Bible, when we have been reasoning it, it is far greater than the nature, what the mankind can count in the terms of this nature, comparing to say that this nature is far greater what he has experienced. But the nature is nothing before every thought of the word of the Lord of our God, because they are a vast sum. And when we have so many things to discuss, when we have so many things to learn, how we can become shackled to smartphones? How we can become slaves to these smartphones? The smartphones are not the one that should put chains, it is Bible that should put chains. It is Bible that which has to be put upon your forehead, nailed. following the method and the process of Martin Luther. His grace is so great when we read Psalms 25, verse number 20. The Yosher and the Kassak. Because 
we shall not have the shame of our expectation. Those who wait upon the Lord of our God shall never be ashamed. And putting that in mind, he teaches for us in the great realm of his life. And he writes that great poem of a line. And he goes to say that the faithfulness of the Lord of our God abides forever. And he teaches to us that great faithfulness of Lord's glory is far more important than anything else on this earth. Therefore, dear brethren, while using that word in the book of Psalms, he teaches for us wherewith he made his poem to say, a mighty fortress is of the Lord, and that is what he says, Kasa. Therefore he uses that word in 2520 of Psalms, I take refuge in him, because he is the one who develops in me the Tamim character to walk before him flawless. And he is the one who has developed in me the virtue of his quality, your share. Therefore, he writes that word, What a mighty fortress is of a Lord, of a God. So taking that now into our life, not just looking upon the 95 theses, what he has written, but now the church should truly know the entire Bible being taught in the original languages of the scriptures. Thus, with the great authority of the Lord of our God, we would love to chain the Bible rather than the smartphones. We would take the Bible and nail it to the forehead to every believer to know. At least they can learn to slip the beer, the translations. From there, at least they could grow up to slave the lion in the Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic interlinear. At least they would wake up to come and to understand the word being taught in the original languages of the scriptures and become chained to the word of the Lord of God of the Holy Scriptures in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic rather than chaining themselves with the smartphones. The reason why we say, once again, because the land has been polluted even with sore destruction. Wake up! Therefore he says, Arise and depart out from the rest of your land. How you have been resting now in your land. This is not a time for us to rest. This is a serious time for us and a high time for us to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of our God. This is a serious time for us to wake up, to realize that we have something far greater in this church age. We have to realize the time is short and every breath is a spiritual warfare unseen going along. And if you don't wake up, certainly you are being there in the polluted land. The land even with sore destruction. And yet what we are finding today, the Lord of our God gives greater grace. My son Karen, to those who are humble believers, what a word it is for us. So that you could wake up and learn Bible doctrine. Because you are independent of the world. And that's the true status quo for my Macarian believer in Christ. Though in the world you have your cell phone, you are independent upon it because you use your smartphone only for the needs, but not to shackle that for your change. You should rather shackle yourself the word of the Lord of a God. You should shackle upon your forehead the Bible like the way how they used to tie the phylacteries and you should know the importance of this great word to be in your pulpits, to be in your life because without having the divine viewpoint, no matter however the world may lead you and call you to understand with great reasoning, rationalism and empiricism, when compared to the word of the Lord of a God, they are nothing. Therefore, we find a great instruction in Ezekiel 31.2, even for us as a pastor teachers, 
open up your mouth when the Lord of our God teaches to open it up. If not, better shut your mouth. Because the mouth of the righteous one is a well of life. And whenever we open up our mouth, it is what we call. As the word of the Lord of God calls for us to open up in divine oracles. Open up with being seasoned with salt. And how can you open up if you have been shackled to the lust of this world rather than shackling yourselves to the knowledge of Bible doctrine day by day? And how can you say you are doing great things without having the knowledge of the Lord of God in you? Therefore, Ezekiel 40, Isaiah 40 to 19, not Ezekiel, teaches to us, for us, that who is the blind, who is the deaf as my soul went, and who is one as perfect in it. We put one eye to open up into the world, and we come back and we look at the details of this life, and we say, the details of this life are greater. But if ever you want to look upon the details of this life, first you have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, learn the thorough knowledge of the word of the Lord of God, have the futuric viewpoint, that's what we call. When you see from the above, you will come to know. When you have an absolute confidence, the first thing you have to have an absolute reality of the word, and that will give you an absolute confidence the way how Peter became once again the great one, and he went along to teach them, though they were being beaten with many strips, and though the word says for us, he did not stop because he said here, we are here to obey the Lord and not you men. That's what when he has seen the resurrected Lord, he got the transformation. Likewise, when we, when we look the completed can of scripture, what is our life, why is our life, and why we have been born on this earth, then definitely you will come to know that you have a greater purpose. And to fulfill that greater purpose, our Lord, our God, would give you greater grace. So that the one who are proud he definitely humbles them. That's what James 4, 6 is all about. As we can read that, it teaches for us, because we find two Greek words over there. In James chapter 4, in comparison to anistemi, he says, He giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, and the word for resisteth is anitasomai, which is nothing but to range in battle against, to oppose oneself. Why? Because the one to whom he is battling, he is a proud one, huperophanas. Why he is a proud one? Because he is obviously haughty and proud to believe his own human energy to be the strength rather than believing the great word of the Lord of God to be the strength and the power through Lord God the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he cut short those who are resisting the grace of the Lord of God. Because do you know why? Because of the prideness. The same thing what we can read now in the book of Micah, what we are reading, Arise and Depart, in chapter number 2. And those who say to the prophets or to the pastors, don't teach us the right things, teach us lies. Because they don't want to look upon the shame at present so that the shame could be covered before the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, our Lord of God says, it is better for you to enter with one hand, to enter with one leg and one eye, rather than entering with both the hands and having for you not the true fear valuation of the Lord. If ever you have been truly fearing the Lord, you know very well how to evaluate yourselves. But since you don't have the true fear of the Lord of our God, you evaluate not yourselves. Therefore, you're allowed to enter to think, what if happens, I will just confess my sins, I will sin again, again I will fall to sin. You haven't cut your hand or leg. By that we mean the walk of your life, the work of your hands, which is contrary to the Lord's will. And what will be your reward for eternity? Shame. Therefore, he says, the one who are proud, the one who show oneself above others, 
And this proud ones, what we look, how a lot of God says, he resisteth the proud. But he giveth grace to the one who are humble, tapainas. And the one which has been called tapainas, who are of a low degree. And that's what we can call as a depressed ones. Therefore, he says again, resist the devil, submit yourselves therefore to the Lord of a God and resist. Again, here we find anisthemi, but there we found 498, which is nothing but anti so my, but here we find anisthemi. And what does your word meant to say? To set against, to oppose, to withstand. And why he gives greater grace to the humble believer and he, resists the, and he doesn't give grace or register the proud? Because you have come with a true repentance to learn Bible doctrine, if ever you would come. If ever you would make yourself shackles to the word of the Lord of a God, changed to the word of the Lord of a God, rather than wasting your valuable time by becoming changed to the smartphones or the lustful patterns of this old sin nature, the details of life, or in simple terms to say, to love the world. But the word says, love not the world. Touch not the world, taste not the world, handle not the world, but it says, touch and taste and handle the word of the Lord of a God. And more sure prophecy than that what we have, though we have touched him, though we have been with him, though we have enjoyed our fellowship with him, you have a sure word than that, what it is, the word of the Lord of our God given to you now in the completed canon of scripture. This great Bible what we are handling, this great Bible which is our life, and taken from the original languages of the scriptures, they have far greater innovation work in our mind. The translations are just like the basic elements. And why we call it as a basic elements in whichever language you go through. Till the time you could get the right pastor teacher when you pray for the right pastor teacher to come into your life. The basic elements you have learned, kneeling down and reading seven times. Now we have been prepared to ask many questions. You get many questions, and the pastor teacher, when he comes, who has already slipped the beer and the lion and is now slipping the galiath, will come. And I will expound that in the original language of the word, and he teaches to you. This is what it is all about. That's the work, and that's the special responsibility, and that's the special privilege of the pastor teacher. At the same time, great honor, double honor, at the same time, greater punishment, my son Krima. He has both. And to learn and to teach you more and more, he gives you his life as a sacrifice to the Lord. It cannot be done in a overnight. It takes day by day preparation. Our Lord of a God in his humanity went 40 days to learn. More, Paul went three years. Moses went 40 years into the wilderness, the time that he spent in isolation with the Lord of God. How many years of preparation you have as a pastor teacher? How many years you have been there or here in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, learning the Word? And yet what is happening today in our pulpits? The entertaining clowns are taking place into the church. The kleptes, the lestes, the mistotes, the tupas, the canapes, the tiflos, and the shelras oriented minded pastors are coming to the church. Saying in a overnight, Lord spoke to me in a vision or a dream because I can make a better guitar player in the church. Just look back how much they are well shackled to their own lustful patterns without having the proper revolution of the word of the Lord of our God and being perished. In the TRB we find blessed ease, but in the KJV we find the italics of that word ease. And the TRB which says for us, blessed is the one who comes to listen doctrine day by day in Proverbs 8.34. The one who comes to learn the Lord's mind 
waiting eagerly at the doorposts of the Lord our God. This is the one who is loving the life of the Lord because he's loving the doctrine of the Lord and the time that has been given to him in the prescribed time he would calculate to the Lord our God. I would ask Lord show me how to number my days for thy glory. How I have to finish this, how I have to write slaving the beer, slaving the lion, slaving the Goliath seven times and not just seven times going to slave 22 times in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and going not just 22 times because you Lord you gave power to to David to get back instead of 100, 200 foreskins and the midst of this world where the people are interested in the creation to be their guards rather than looking upon the creator. Lord we would love to leave behind a great legendary impact by writing 44 times help us to help us to calculate the time of you and help us to kneel down in thy presence daily so that we can have the knees of iron that's what your thinking should be if the unbelievers are happy in reigning their gods to be greater and thinking they are greater in their valor and vigor but we know very well there are no gods at all apart from my Christ then how much more we should be the one who know the true Lord the one who walks through us in the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit. The one who operates in us to the praise of His glory and His grace. Do you know what a privilege we have in all of these things? And yet what we are finding? The men on this earth are not privileged to learn this doctrine with a great fear of the Lord. The privilege to serve with lips, the privilege to serve with the man made precepts, the privilege not to serve our Lord of our God with the heart. And according to the demands of the word of the Lord of our God, redeeming the time. That's what we look in Ephesians 5 14. Purchase the time according to the demands of the word of the Lord of our God, not according to your flesh, not according to the things of your thinking, what you can think. And yet the grace of the Lord of our God is so great to teach us. In this live examples of the present Christendom technological points, the cell phones, what if it be we would forsake the Bible and would come back in search of it? What if it would be to look into the Bible repeatedly during the day as you look into your cell phones? What if it would be as our Bible to receive messages from God regularly? as you seek and search for your WhatsApp, for your social media, for your status symbols. <laughs> what if it would be to treat our Bible as though we would not be able to live without it? That's the peak in the smartphones. That's why you have a power bank with you to see that if the phone is dead, you cannot survive. <laughs> Do you know what is it? The clutches of Satan. The good what you find. Do you think you're reading Bible in your smartphones? Doesn't your conscience judge you? If you go back and look at your history, what are you watching in that? What are you looking in that? Are you using that for positive construction or you're destroying your own soul? 99.99% of the people are using the smartphones to destroy their own soul rather than to edify, though they have ample of things to be taught. For example, you can find from the Believer's Chapel, Lewis Johnson teachings. Though in some things he's accurate, though in some things he's not so much confident either himself. Learn those things. Like the way how Dan Duncan, who goes to teach about the church history, learn. How you get that? You get through your smartphones, download it, keep it as your MP3 format and listen and be edified. That's a positive thing. If Satan could use all means to destroy you, though you are into this world, use all weapons to destroy the thinking of Satan in your mind, in your pulpits, in your life, in your nation, in your societies, in your pivots, whatever you form, and have a relaxed mental attitude through his word. But you don't use that weapon effectively, isn't it? Because when you're not able to use the Rima, the word of the Lord of a God, accurately to read and to study, only the offensive weapon what we have is the word. 
When you don't use it effectively, you will not come the importance to understand what might be the commentary on such and such. You will not come to understand what might be the isagogical background on the passage. You will not come to understand what might be the categorical, exegetical thoughts on that subject. And many people love to spend a lot of money upon the things called as the resource material. But in the net you find them freely to download through his ward, the Rick Mayer's option, and then the BLB option, and then the many things like Pursuers Tufts, and there are so many other things as well which can give you freely and truly and understand what is it. But we don't want to use all those things. That's what Galatians 5.13 which teaches to us. Using the liberty to serve the flesh rather than using the liberty to serve in the spirit with love. So fitly it stands for us. Serving your liberty on the occasion of lust rather than using this great technology for you sitting and reading if it is not able to do go back and get your printouts the books what you download like the international critical commentary the exegetical ones you don't find that in print go back and download and then take a copy of it you know what a lot of information we have it is not that just to say that we are the only one. No. Earlier than us, there were great men. In the future, the Lord of God knows who will be the great men. We are only the voice of Him to be the one mouth, one accord, and one spirit to teach His truth. And those things which are right, like the Plymouth Brethren, when they have taught, the last theological seminary during the time of my human mentor, Robert Bankatime. How many things you have there to learn? How many things you have there to study? And when you have been there in the need of that, you will search for that. But you are in not in need of that because that proves you don't love my Lord, neither you fear my Lord. Therefore, you spend your time maximum for what? For destruction, the smartphone. Destroying your own soul, destroying your own thinking. So if the believer is independent of the world, then definitely smartphone is just a part for him to use as a positive weapon or a positive tool for edification of his life, according to the terms and standards of the word of the Lord of God. But a boy who is in milk, but a boy who is still eating bread cannot discern even the terms what you get in the Bible in this smartphone. To discern or to say the one who has eaten the strong meat knows in his practical sense of spiritual one to discern what is right or what is evil. If not, he will follow prey for every teachings being taught in the YouTubes or in the things pertaining to the Google. He doesn't know whether the doctrine is of the Lord. Because he hasn't developed, looking upon the time you should be the communicators of Bible doctrine, but since you haven't developed what you do, you become a prey for it. And there are many people with a half knowledge who want to put comments <laughs> as if they are great. But there are really certain men who are really great who put a positive comments, who put a comments which could edify you, which could give you the truth. But half knowledge people will love to put comments. And some would love to develop. Even there we can find this corruption. Even there we could find men who haven't had a thorough access, a clear consideration of the thing so that they could decide and discern and put. The only thing that could be clear conscious for us is the word of the Lord of a God. And the way our Lord of a God reveals to us his word, we are going to put upon the YouTube. And for them it has been prepared, our Lord of a God knows he's going to send this for them. And let them cross-check like the way how they cross-check Paul, the Berians, the doctrine what he was teaching, it was in the New Testament. They went and go back and searched in the Old Testament because that time there was no canon of scripture of the New Testament. Likewise, whatever we teach in the YouTube, go back and cross-check and see. 
so that it is your life. And if you don't cross-check, the pastor teacher who is preaching it, if he is not in fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or if he is not been ordained by the Lord of God to have this work to represent my Christ, he would rather love you to take from you your wool, your milk, your blood, your meat, rather than feed you with a good pasture, the right pasture to use the word. He will come to devour you rather than to feed you through his word. Therefore the right designation is teaching shepherd, didasco pie man. Teaching first so that he can shepherd them if they are going out of the way so that they could reach the maximum glorification of the Lord by becoming the mature believers in Christ and become self-independent. To be free from the world and to be into the world of Bible doctrine. And when they could reach the spiritual maturity, they are having a greater life ahead to realize. If the missionaries like William Carey or if the teachings like Robert Bankatime wouldn't have been set free of course for the entire world, then it would be only for him, like the one who has dig and kept that one talent in the soil. But they came out because they want others also to be saved. Therefore, the quote of William Carey, expect great things from Lord when you attempt great things for God. Greater grace upon such believers. They did it, their work. Looking at his biography and history in my country, India, the way how it has been written, he says, till 11 years, no convert for him. But he waited and resisted in spite of that his wife being sick lost his son, again they went back. But he did not go back. But he did not, but he didn't go back. In all of these things, what we look, the love, in truth, that's what Ephesians 4.15 concludes for us. That we serve our Lord of God in love of truth. In the demands of agape love, in truth. That's what we are able to look today and talk in the terms of the Lord's will. If not, our nation, country, or India wouldn't have been evangelized. But the Lord of God sent in the first century Apostle Thomas, and then in the 17th century we find earlier than them there were few Lutheran missionaries who came and the other one, but the one translated into Bibles in 24 languages being taken care of by William Carey. Therefore, he's been called as the father of modern missionaries. It is in the plan and in the life of the Lord of our God to provide us this information. It is in His plan that we should be born in this earth. In the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations who do not know the true light of the Lord. And since we have been born according to the will of Lord God the Father, He has a plan for every believer on account of His righteousness credited to us to magnify His word above His name and how we could be slaves to forms. Therefore, what if we treat our Bible as though we were not able to live without it? And what if we would use the Bible on our trips? What if we would use cons always consult our Bible in emergencies like you go and Google? What if we would take at least as much as time every day to read the Bible as we take to send and receive text messages to the stealth to to the cell phones or to the smartphones? And what if we would pay the same monthly amount toward the spread of the gospel as we pray, as we pay for our cell phone bill? With most of us, life would change considerably. Isn't Lord God's word worth being read or bet worth being heard or read or written regularly? Let's challenge ourselves to take our Bible in our hand daily and to read it prayerfully for those who are not still into the path of daily discipleship program. Lord God certainly must have a message for us every day as he spread the spiritual manna, the physical manna in the wilderness and he says he was testing them. So he is coming every day, morning by morning, through the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to give you the spiritual manna that has been reserved and kept for us today. 
the unbelievers of my country are far greater in need when they would go back to their gods to worship and they say that called as a prasadam to them but we are missing out our prasadam every day to go to their gods and to pray and to get that prasadam they would wake up at morning three o'clock and they would go to the temples they would take bath and they would be ready and we know very well what it is as apostle paul says it is nothing then how much more it is for us to learn to come and to take in the word of the lord of our god as a greater prasadam for us the word prasadam meant to say for you the things offered to the idols what they keep and they take a part of it and they give do you know what is the meaning of that they say that those gods are first eaten now you're eating the food which the gods have hate uh, have been eaten up and we know very well but they meant to say it has been sanctified for them through their gods and the people are waiting for that food <laughs> the famous one being in the in in the part of this southern called as andhra pradesh the tirupati where they go back and get the prasadam we are not talking or interested to talk about to talk about the things pertaining to their gods and their prasadams but illustrating you an example to teach let them do as our lord of a god says let them alone the work of us is to preach the gospel if they would hear they would save therefore we find in revelation 13:8 those who worship them are the ones whose names have been written not in the book of the lamb of god and the pain of us is that though we are given much expected much from us we are not able to do the full work of evangelism to this people who are perishing because you haven't developed to become the ambassadors of the law therefore we find over here let's challenge ourselves to take every day the word of the lord of our god and write it when you have finished reading it upon your knees seven times the seven to seven of genesis seventh chapter the seven flower of the heaven and then the two unclean animals and then the seven cleansed animals the two unclean animals what we have thought about the lion and the bear in comparison to revelation 13:3 in lamentations 3:10 and followed by in first samuel what he says i have slain the bear and the lion and the clean animals what he give as a sacrifice slaying it out 22 times not just 22 times but you go to write another 22 times the 44 times so dear brethren lord god certainly must have a message for us each and every day and the greater you reject to come to learn bible doctrine every day the greater we are being shackled to this world so a big macarian believer in christ is not being shackled to this world because he's independent of the world is having only the lord god to be his complete satisfaction and is not depending anyway upon the favorable circumstances of this world that could drive him out from depending upon the lord alone rather than depending upon the lord alone he would love to depend upon the world it would drive out every mannerism it would drive out every circumstances it would drive them out and yet what do we have we have to look the teaching of the spirit so that our enlightenment of the eyes could take place and the truth which has been concealed through the word of the lord of god could be taught which has been revealed in the word of the lord through the holy scriptures that is original hebrew greek and aramaic so that we can see and taste and handle our lord of god day by day so dear brother on an instance for you to learn if your cell phone would be the bible how it would be every day being changed to the bible the world the heaven and the earth belongs to the lord the earth being his footstool the heaven beings and declaring the firmament of the glory of the lord why we seek and search 
till to become slaves for our roles in nature rather than becoming the great word of the Lord of a God to this people as he called us to be the word of God because he has called us to be the 410 code to this man and that what we are finding today in our pulpits men are no longer interested in the terms pertaining to doctrine but they are much more interested to look the details of this life into the terms which is not at all perfect the sin the world the flesh which has been resultant of the works of satan to deceive our federal head and yet continuing to deceive through the world through the flesh showing the pleasures of the flesh and to sin but yet through Christ we crucify this flesh yet through Christ we triumphant of the lord and we trample satan under our feet because the last enemy even being death is being erased out and now we have to be available through this same sinful flesh becoming the slaves of the righteousness of the lord of a god and to be a true witnesses of his word So dear brethren think over these issues the lord of a god is elated is having a great gladness in his heart to provide us in the faithful terms of his faithfulness through his heart and soul the pesh and heart the right things of the word of the lord of a god day by day and the greater the time we spend not to realize these things to be number one priority in our pulpit the greater your life depends upon lies and not in truth so dear brethren think about these issues life is too short the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large and doing the right work of the pastor teacher let us be for the glory of the lord our god and as we come every day because lord of a god has every day for us his spiritual manna to be done so as we come every day to the praise of his glory let's come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine fellowship of lord god the holy spirit for which cause he has kept us alive to be the makarian kaine ketesis of this church church think over these issues with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without christ without hope without any salvation believing upon the lord and savior jesus christ you shall be saved in the privacy of your soul you tell to lord god the father that you believe upon his dear beloved son that is the moment itself you have been qualified to take in this great spiritual life because you have been given eternal life then and there itself and not to waste your life in the terms pertaining to the details of this life but rather becoming now to seek the things that are above by putting to death the necromancy of your flesh deeds and seeking to perform that you are independent of the favorable circumstances of the world and you are there fully satisfied only in lord god the father that's what the resultant growth should be for you conforming to the image of his dear beloved son whereas for the believer the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of bible doctrine wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free and for the pastor teacher the greatest merit is to caruso thon lagan herald the word in season and out of season because of the dharma to my witnesses where we have been called the number one diamond from our witnesses in wellington city followed the bible in our hands and number two diamond from our witnesses our hearers if there are no hearers dear brethren we need not worry because besides nature the entire angelic host will be our witnesses but it is in the realm of the lord of our lord god's grace to give this teachings to whom he desires and the greater he gives us this time the greater we should be thankful and arise ourselves and depart the way how we are living a life of a relaxed one 
and wake up to realize the time is short and try to put a great fight on behalf of Lord God the Father as being his chosen soldiers in this church age. Therefore, the land has been polluted. Wake up. Because it shall destroy you even with the sore destruction if you still cater to the deeds of this flesh. Dear brethren, wake up to the reality so that being the shepherds you shall not be ashamed when you stand in his presence. And at the same time, at the judgment seat of Christ, you would say, like an unprofitable slave, O Lord, what is our duty we have done? If it would have been there, O Lord, it would have been still greater effort for us. But since it is a time for us to grow up gradually, to learn for gradually, and to grow up in thy grace, we might have done the things grieving and squelching and deceiving the Holy Spirit of God. But yet, you give greater grace to those humble believers who work for thy glory. And we are thankful for it, O Lord, because it is you alone who shall reign forever and forever. And on account of the righteousness given to us, he demands and he desires that his law to be magnified. Isn't it a great privilege for us? So, dear brethren, that should be our thinking when we come in the presence of the Lord. And in the meantime on this earth, every day learn to know the truth so that the truth can set you free. It is not just learning, but living a practical life for His glory. That makes the difference. Think about these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great revelation you have given for us to learn Thy Word through Thy Word. If the word has not been given for us under the name called as Yahweh, the gift of revelation to the sinful mankind would have perished long back in our thoughts. And purely according to thy will, wherewith you have said, the righteous will always have an everlasting foundation in thee. Father, we are grateful and thankful for the great privilege which have chosen us to be on this earth and to do ministry for their work. What else we can ask, O Lord? You have done great things through the nature and through the supernatural beings, through the angels. Now through us, being babes, you love to seek praises for thee. Help us, O Lord, to do it faithfully by making the congregation at least to know what is their purpose and plan in Christ. Help us, O Lord, to train them up very faithfully as well. So, Father, search us diligently and see if there is an offense in us. At the same time, O Lord, lead us to thy complete revolution of the word, so that, Father, we have to yet reach the perfection of the word and rightly divide the truth, as we have said in Micah 2, that arise and depart, because the land has been polluted and rest not, because the land has been polluted with a greater destruction of a sore one. Help us, O Lord, to understand these things to these minds, what we have communicated today, so that, Lord, they could truly know if their cell phones, rather than shackling in chains to their hands, it would be Bible. What a great renovation it would be, O Lord. So, Father, the Macarian believer being independent in this world and not able to look upon the favorable circumstances for him, but being quite and assurancely occupied in Christ, help us, O Lord, to be fully satisfied only in thee, and not the details of this life any longer, neither to open up our mouth in the terms pertaining to the foolish talks of this earth. And I will open up our mouth, O Lord, let thy name be magnified, and thy word to be magnified through our lives. Give this tongue even to the people who are interested to be the believers of thy word. As the tongue of the learned one, as we have trained up your dear beloved son in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4, morning by morning. To this end we pray, Father, that thy name alone to be glorified. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our in Lord, so that these things could be meant and they could be challenged by these standards. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these times. Amen.